separating Singapore and the gateway to the ancient city of Angkor Wat is a mere 1,334 kilometers. Flight time, two hours direct to Siam Reap. Siam Reap, a resort town in the northwest of Cambodia. The roads here lead to the ruins of the ancient city. TripAdvisor listed over 1,600 properties in Siam Reap, ranging from budget to five-star accommodations. So what do you think about Siam Reap? Actually, it has always been in my bucket list to visit Siam Reap because of Angkor Wat. Angkor Wat, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, is the largest religious monument in the world. Spread across more than 400 acres, it was built as a Hindu temple in the first half of the 12th century. Angkor Wat sits on the foundation of sand, kept firm by a constant supply of groundwater that rises and falls with the seasons. How is the ride? Huh? How's the ride? I thought the ride is nicer than the bus ride. <laughs> You know how much is the ticket? The ticket is thirty-seven dollars US dollar. Can you see? Got my picture. Okay, and this ticket will allow me to go to the toilet free of charge. While most temples in this region face east, Angkor Wat faces west, in line with Hindu beliefs. Hindu deities are believed to sit facing east, while Vishnu faces west. Vishnu is the preserver and protector of the universe. Angkor Wat was built in devotion to Vishnu. Its architecture followed suit. Angkor Wat is protected by a 15-foot high wall and a wide moat covering an area of 200 acres. At its most prosperous time, Angkor Wat was a city with temples and housed the palace of the Khmer Empire. However, wooden infrastructures were destroyed by floods and wars. Only the sandstone structures stood the test of time. What really surprises me is, I feel uh, Angkor Wat is a place, right? Not just come once. You probably have to come a few times. Because uh, at different time of the year, on different weather, it actually changes how Angkor Wat looks like. There are five ancient gates providing access through the eight meter high laterite walls of Angkor Thom. The south gate is the best preserved. On each side of the bridge, there are 54 stone giants pulling on the body of a Naga serpent. Ah, is my uh, personal assistant for this trip. His name is Jonathan. He helped me take photo, carry water, and hold my hands. This is the royal city of Angkor. The south gate is 23 meters high, and above it is a huge four-faced Buddha statue with a serene smile. It is one of the iconic symbols of Angkor's monuments. A kilometer north from the south gate is the Bayon Temple. It is one of the most popular temples in the country. Bayon Temple sets itself apart with its intricate structures you'll find the famous smiling faces looking down on you from 54 towers. Yeah. 
Mm. It's like the point of view that you're following me on a virtual tour there. Okay. Bayon is in the heart of the ancient city of Angkor Thom, which was the symbolic center of the Khmer Empire. It was dedicated to Buddha by King Jayavarman VII. This state temple was originally called Jayagiri, which means Victory Mountain, but was renamed Bayon Temple sometime after the period of the French occupation. Life as a model, come closer, come closer, come closer, come closer. See? So Liu Han. It's very nice. Look at this. Beautiful. Look, if you ask me about favorite place, I think my favorite place would be Taprom where you see the temple and the tree actually rooted on top of the temple. So I'm wondering how actually it's such a heavy tree that can hold such an old structure. It's actually dated thousand years ago. So you see how strong is this structure that in the ancient time they actually built this. And you see that interior carving, all this. It's very unique that you see how much effort they, they want to build this tomb and temple, right? To actually magnify right, the kingdom glory. Taprom Temple is another grand monument in ancient Angkor city. It's an amazing one, and many call it the Tree Temple. Let me bring you to see something okay, that make Angelina Jolie wanted to film the movie here. Because this set shoe has got very sexy lips, just like her. Come on. Kissing lips. <laughs> Kissable lips, oh, you see? So interesting. Ooh. Okay, come, come, come. Follow me, I'm going to bring you all to see um, like the most impressive landmark in this temple. I mean, what makes everybody from all around the world to come here. Okay. Look at this. Can you see? 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 Enormous is this tree. Oh my god. You know there are actually two trees. There are actually two trees. Yeah, one tree wrapping another tree. And these two trees actually wrap the temple. Made famous through movies, this site is also known as the Tomb Raider Temple. It's a magnificent sight to behold as trees, some 500 years old, grow its intricate roots that climb rocks and wrap pillars making them a part of the temple. Is it safe to travel to Siem Reap? Well, overall, Siem Reap is probably the safest place in Cambodia, and that is why it has become a well-visited tourist destination. Surrounding look very clean. I'm actually very, very impressed. Because, right, I would expect, um, you know, there are certain areas, right, will be like Thailand or Indonesia, right? But I'm very surprised that you look at the street. Can you see? Look at the street. It is so clean. I can see it. 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 The Cambodian arts and crafts are worth appreciating. 
Leather carving is one of the ancient traditions of Khmer people that till today remains practiced in Cambodia. Top Street, officially named Street 8, is the culinary and nightlife hub of Siem Reap, sort of the city's answer to Bangkok's famed Khao San Road. Fried ice cream is one of the best street food in Pub Street. Starting from one US dollar, there are more than 10 flavors to mix and match. It's a great deal. Not bad, not bad. A mango, a mango, I can taste the mango. Nice. Actually, I'm also very impressed with the hospitality uh, in Siam Reap when we were walking on the pub street. I thought it was very interesting, like, because, you know, I get to see a different face of Siam Reap. Like, daytime is all about history, culture, and all these. Uh, Scully, uh, at night, uh, wow, you see all the shopping stuff, you know, the roadside store, and then the restaurants, people drinking, chilling. And then, the, you know, the, remember the little girl yes. that I was chatting with her? I thought it was, she was quite cute. Uh. Yes. Then why you learn Chinese? Why you learn Chinese? I study. You study Chinese? Yes. Three years. Three years? Yes, San year. San Yes. Yeah. Three years you study Chinese? Yes. You study in school or you study on YouTube? Um, study in school. Study in school? Yes. And you're only 16 years old? Yes, I'm 16 years old. I'm just kidding. <laughs> How old are you then? In Cambodia, the official language is Khmer, but most people also speak French. English is commonly spoken in Cambodia too. Okay. It's estimated that over 50% of the population can converse in English, so interacting with locals is possible. Just introduce some uh, items. Yes, please. Uh, this is spring onion uh, coconut pancake with coconut sauce. And this is pork pate with my uh, pickles. Mm. And this is pandan thick rice. Mm -hmm. Dumpling, uh, I mean, uh, sukopam dumpling with coconut crib. Mm. And this is caramel banana. Mm. And the yellow one here is uh, mug bean with egg yolk. Okay. Yeah, mug, mug bean with egg yolk. And mm. this one is uh, taro and sagu pudding, mm -hmm. and this is uh, like a uh, vegetarian spring roll. Spring roll. Mm -hmm. It actually gave me a different aspect of uh, what uh, Siam Reap can offer. Oriental leaf, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, they tell me oh, that one is for superstar one eh. <laughs> the rest I walk in stairs. It's a 30-minute bus ride from Siam Reap Centre to the jetty. <laughs> Definitely, I think this is not just going to be a scenic cruise ride. I'll probably get to experience and get to witness the real Cambodia. Tonle Sap Lake is the largest freshwater lake in Southeast Asia. Here, locals live and thrive on the edge of the waters. Schools, markets, churches and homes are on floats. On this boat ride, glimpses of daily life on the water are seen. Hello! Wow, I tell you, this place is like just so calm and I'm very, very impressed. Uh, that in Although you, when you look at the colour of the water, right, it doesn't look like crystal clear kind, but I can tell that actually the water are very clean. And also, uh, I think the local people, they really make good use of uh, whatever they have around them uh, to live. 
for example, like all the sea plants uh, that you see on the water, they were being used uh, to be the hammock, they were being used uh, to make into food or something that are useful to their daily life. I think it's something that uh, we are lack of because we are just so you know, complacent whereby we have everything in the supermarket. But over here, the local people just have to rely on what they have and, uh, and make good use of them. I think this is something that we should learn from the local. <笑>你讲错了 The people of Kampong Pluk floating village live in a fascinating way. It is home to about 900 boats and they move every couple of weeks according to the water level changes. What a beautiful day, right? With blue sky, white clouds, beautiful greeneries, but, 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 but. How come this um, lake, uh, the colour, uh, like, uh, maybe you would think that can be better. But let me tell you something. If you get to see this lake at this colour, you are so lucky. Because not every day, this lake is in this colour. Because the water actually flows from Mekong River. So along the way, right, they actually bring a lot, a lot of particles and soy and resulted in this colour that you see today, that I see today. But if you come two months later, this whole lake is going to change colour, oh my god. So it looks like I have to come back again. No? And let me tell you something, uh, this uh, lake right, is three times the size of Singapore and during low tide, it's only about the size of Singapore. Still very big, leh. don't forget no MRT here. Leh. But you know what, no? the people over here can actually take a boat ride from here to Phnom Penh and it takes only six hours. Six hours. Oh. Wow, six hours. Uh. Yeah, where's my sunblock? I need my sunblock. <laughs> Now I feel like a local living on this lake, looking around and I'm shopping with like, you know, provision shop. People are living, selling flowers, I think they're selling ice cream. Sometimes you ask yourself, life can be actually very simple, okay? But it's just that we are being brought up in this manner, where we don't live it so simply. <laughs> but actually, life can be very simple. Because even the locals, can you imagine if you feed them with mineral water, they cannot get used to it. They are used to drinking the water from this lake. It's very, very emotional when you see, and I see all this crowd because exactly 365 days ago, this airport is totally empty. Both of us are also from the travel industry, la. so this pandemic has actually affected a lot of things and it changes a lot of us, okay, to be honest. But what do you think uh, was like the biggest changes or what did you observe from our customers' behaviour? In the past, people always book with parents, family, all this. But it's not realised that they actually, Joe friend, 
to book. Everyone get to know one another or maybe through work, community. So now I realize that they actually come in groups of friends to book instead of just family. This is what I realized the change that through pandemic brings people together. So Jonathan, do you know what kind of style is this kind of travel? The Thai Thai style.